Sohia. Say hi, Mama. Hi. Say what you want to say to me now. I want to wake up with you in the morning. Something that's not fake to me now. I want to wake I'm Dan Jaja from Juja Rodosto. I'm the patron of this institution. So, welcome. Today, I'm going to take through uh, the main subject is the uh, antenatal care. In short form, we call NC clinics. You find that antenatal care is the comprehensive personalized care which is provided to the pregnant woman. And the aim of NC clinic eh, is to have good outcome of the mother and the baby. And also the principles of this NC clinic I want you to know well is one is the disease detection, quality of quality of care, and also individualized care. So those are the importance of NC clinic and its principles. Uh, point two, you find that eh, I'm going to take you through danger signs which is being observed during NC. Uh, one is per vaginal breeding is a danger sign when you are pregnant if you observe some breeding from the vagina please come to hospital immediately two is severe headache so it's a danger sign three severe abdominal pains it's a danger sign four fevers so it's a danger sign five Difficulty in breathing, so it's a danger sign. Six, convulsion, so it's a danger sign during pregnancy. And another thing you need to know about NC, we have some various services which we normally perform during the first clinic. It's advisable you start from 12 to 16 weeks and above. And the first clinic event that we normally give tetanus, diphtheria, first dose, and the second dose we give after one month, which is four weeks, eh? tetanus, diphtheria. So first pregnancy we inject two tetanus, diphtheria injection. Previously we, we used to call it tetanus injection. Also we give what we call Fork acid stroke ivers. You find that fork acid it pre it assists in development of the fetus. Also, it prevents any anomalies to the baby, and also it boosts the HB to the mother. So those are the importance of ivers stroke fork acid. The second schedule. First is from 16 weeks to 28 weeks. The third feast is from 28 weeks to 32 weeks. And the fourth scheduled feast is, is from above now 36 weeks until you deliver. So at Juja Road, you find that so long as you have active NHIF card, you are sorted. Uh, the card it will get for your NC clinics until you deliver. So make sure, please, you have a valid active NHIF card. If you want to know you are in labor, we start with what we call lower abdominal pains. The lower abdominal pains, which is going to radiate to the back with the increase in frequency and intensity at the time. So that's in short, ukisikia ka uchungu hapa from the pelvic ikienda kwa mgongo hivi kirudi hivi kinikris make sure you are those are the other signs of rapa another sign is we call it show show is the blood mucus discharge if you observe some blood mucus discharge please come to the hospital immediately if you observe and pregnant of water 
while you are at home, come to the hospital immediately. Reduced feet of movement, you need to come to the hospital immediately. So my colleague here, sister, for is going to take us through what you need to carry when you are in labor. Hi, I'm Pauline, a nurse at Judah Road Maternity. Hizi ndio vitu zenye mtu anapaswa kukua nazo wakati anapokuja kujifungua. Baby's bag. Number one, diapers and sudden baby wipes. Liners, baby vaseline, cotton buds, receiving set, body suit, vest, socks, robbers, shawl na baby blankets eh? what the mother needs to carry leso nursing bra breast pads medicot cotton wool maternity panties nursing pillow dera slippers soap face towel and lotion so you have had what you need to carry to come with when you are coming for your admission so what you need we normally do immediately when the baby has been born so it's advisable we keep the baby warm always to avoid hypothermia also the standard guideline is we need to practice the baby to start breastfeeding within one hour. So this is because we are going to create good bonding between the mother and the baby. So that's the importance of initiating breastfeeding within one hour. So after we have initiated breastfeeding we have also immunization services which we are going to introduce to the baby immediately one pcg we normally inject on the left hand subcutaneous site it prevents the baby against tuberculosis and it's it's being given within two weeks or 14 days so before we discharge our mothers we normally ensure we have injected the baby with pcg polio vaccine two drops it prevents the baby against polio maritis and paralysis of the legs three we normally also give what we call vitamin k and also we normally give what we call hepatitis b vaccine which prevents the baby against an viral disease to the river. So, before we discharge our mothers to go to their various homes, let's say the mother and uh, went cesarean sections, in practice we call it CS, or no more delivery, stroke vagina delivery. So we have some different health message we normally offer to our mothers. We start with no more delivery. Let's say during delivery, uh, we performed what we call episiotomy. Stroke, there was a tear and we repaired. The first management we normally advise, normally use warm salt water. You can use a potro, then you sprinkle it. Or you can use a patient, warm salt water. You find that warm salt water, it will facilitate quick healing and it will prevent an ascending sepsis stroke infection to the tear stroke episiotomy site. Another point to advice we normally give to our mothers if you deliver normal is thorough breastfeeding of the baby exclusively. Don't give baby, uh, water or 
cow milk we normally advise we give what we call breast milk because it has all the nutrients to the baby and it's also it will help the baby to boost immunity also we normally advise while back at home you can take the baby to the sunlight from 8 to 9 a.m 5 to 6 p.m the sunlight is going to assist the baby in boosting with vitamin d in the body and also it will prevent any other signs of jaundice jaundice means yellowness of the eyes and the skin if it sees the river mother the advice is we need to keep the scar in season side dry and clean always to avoid an ascending infection point two you need to ambulate around ambulation means walking around in any surgery we normally advise a patient stroke a client to start to practice walking around because through walking around it will facilitate quick healing of the incision site stroke it will also facilitate good drainage system to the incision site danger signs in pregnant uh, danger signs in newborn baby one uh, the first danger sign is difficult to breastfeed is a danger sign if your baby is not breastfeeding please bring the baby immediately for checkup because it's add signs of infection point two is fevers no more temperatures of the baby should range from 36.5 to 37.6 above 38 degrees it's high fevers to the baby the first management will expose the baby exposure then you take the baby to the nearest source for, for fast management another danger sign is failure to pass urine is a danger sign to our babies please make sure the baby passes urine on daily basis Another danger sign is breeding from the cold. It's a danger sign. Please bring the baby immediately for checkup. And the management of the cord. We have a medication known as chlorhexidine solution 7.1%. It's the recommended by World Health Organization and the Ministry of Health in Kenya. So the, this is the best medication for the cord another danger sign i want you to be checking now our babies is yellowness of the eyes and the skin in, in short form we call it, the medical term we call it jaundice please if you have you observe your baby has started developing yellowness of the eyes in the and the skin bring the baby immediately for checkup we did we do the test known as perirubin levels if it's above 300 we recommend what we call phototherapy. If it's less than 250, we recommend sunlight from 8 to 9 a.m., 5 to 6 on daily basis, and exclusive breastfeeding of the baby. Another danger sign is convulsions or danger sign brought by high fevers to the baby and sepsis. Please, if you observe, you observe the baby, with convulsions, press the baby to the nearest hospital for checkup. Another danger sign is crying a lot of the baby and restlessness. We have five points which may make your baby to cry a lot. So restlessness. One is fevers. Two is if the baby is not, is not breastfeeding well, the baby is going to cry a lot. Three, cork issues. It will make the baby to cry. Four. Uh, if you have not changed the diapers of the baby, the baby also will cry out due to discomfort. Another point, and the last one is dry skin. In medical term, we call it dehydration. Dehydration is a danger sign to the baby. Please, when you, if you observe your baby as as develop dehydration bring the baby immediately for checkup and the last 
point I'm wanting to take you through is about family planning. And family planning is recommended we start at six weeks immediately when you bring your baby for first injections, immunizations. When you bring the baby for six weeks injections, we advise we start family planning immediately. So in our hospital family planning, you can come the comfortable days, come on Tuesdays, Saturdays, Saturdays and Sundays. Eh? You will get your met and method you want of family planning. Thank you. Nurse Pauline, visit our Ginger Road maternity for the best maternity and antenatal care services. Welcome home. Shine bright.